I think we know what each side is, and I think that we've heard a lot from both sides, and I think that laying these ideas out here, we don't necessarily need to discuss them at length and try to prove to each other the nuances of each of our own beliefs for the next you know, five hours. I think that we can move on, that we can consider these things, and that we can um, you know, take this home with us, and you know, if we need to revise our own beliefs, if we need to just study things more empirically or you know, whatever, and that we can move on and that, you know, everybody has made their point. That, <laughs> I don't know, what do you guys think? Okay, but by discussing it for three more hours, are we going to convince each other that we're wrong? So, <laughs> well, no, I, th I think it's, I, let me just agree with, with the last criticism, that it's, it's very important to get our facts straight. And it's very important to find out what the doctrines actually are and what percentage of people believe them and what percentage of people have kind of migrated away from, from a literal and rigid adherence to them and, and have uh, modulated their beliefs. Uh, and this is, there are many flavors of Christian belief, not speaking narrowly of, of Catholicism at the moment. Um, I, would, I would actually dispute your claim about the, the kind of uh, the Catholic with a small c uh, spirit of Catholicism. Uh, when you look at what the Pope actually says you have to believe. Uh, and, and I quoted him as recently as last week. But even if we granted that for Catholicism, it's not true for probably what 50% of the American Protestant population believes about Jesus Christ. Uh, and it is absolutely not true of what Muslims believe about Islam, uh, broadly speaking. And uh, yes, I mean, the, de the details absolutely matter, and, and we would be living in a different world if our religions were slightly different, and yes, this is a matter of criticizing bad religion, uh, but my, ar my, f my argument to you further is, what is good in good religion, we can have without dogmatism. We can have in the spirit of scientific rationality. We can practice meditation. We can talk to people who have spent decades practicing meditation and prayer and yoga and, and perturb their nervous system to the nth degree and come back with some interesting reports about how they can modify their experience. And we can talk about how this links up with ethics and all the rest. And at no point should we think that it is wise to pretend to, to believe, to, to, to pretend to know things we don't know. That is simply the, the root of this criticism. <clears throat> there was a, uh, I, the, well, I, some of you know that one of the reasons I actually got into this kind of dual business. <clears throat> there was a, uh, I, the, well, I, some of you know that one of the reasons I actually got into this kind of dual business of science and television was, was seeing The Ascent of Man in 1973. It, how, how many of you saw that series? There was a scene in there at Auschwitz where, where, where Bronowski was actually in the pool at Auschwitz. And he said, it's said that science will dehumanize people and turn them into numbers. Do you remember this? That is false, tragically false. Look for yourself. This is the concentration camp and crematorium of Auschwitz. This is where people were turned into numbers. And he went on to say it was, do it was not done by gas. It was done by arrogance. It was done by dogma. It was done by ignorance when people believe that they have no, that people believe that they have absolute knowledge with no test in reality. This is how they behave. This is what men do when they aspire to the knowledge of gods. And he went on to say that science is a very human form of knowledge. We're always at the brink of the known. We can always feel forward for what is to be hoped. Every judgment in science stands on the edge of error and is personal. Science is a tribute to what we can know, although we're fallible. And in the end, he said, the words were said by Oliver Cromwell, I beseech you in the bowels of Christ, think it possible you may be mistaken. So I think at the... The, at some point, we, we have to find some sort of way of resolving these issues by bringing in, certainly bringing in more data, more evidence, and so on. But um, it, plainly, the, the, the points that Sam and Richard have been raising about the urgency of the issue, I don't think Mel would, would, would contest. Well, I mean, the sky is not falling. All right. But uh, there, there are urgent problems. And I, I, once again, would associate myself with what Beatrice said uh, about how to address them. That is, you you analyze the, the good and bad things that come out of religion and, uh, and you address yourself to the bad things. Right, but she also said that you look for, look for systems that can help you get through of that. So just, just to conclude this morning, there was, I wanted to ask Paul Church and 
um, to talk about the whole notion of the, of, of the possible basis, uh, an evolutionary basis for morality, 